I'm Laurie Thomas with the University of Kentucky Forestry and Natural Resources Extension, and I'm here with the tree of the week, the American chestnut. American chestnut, Castanea dentata, was one of the most important and dominant forest trees of eastern North America, with estimates of nearly 4 billion trees prior to the 1930s. Most populations of American chestnut were nearly destroyed by the chestnut blight caused by the introduced fungus Cryphonectria parasitica. American chestnut is in the Fagaceae or beech family that is made up of six genera and about 600 species of trees that are scattered in the northern and, hemisphere, and southern hemispheres. Castanea is a small genus with approximately 10 to 20 species, which are found in southern Europe, northern Africa, southern and western Asia, and the eastern United States. American chestnut was once a very tall and massive tree that reached heights of 100 feet and up to 4 feet in diameter. Today, however, it is usually found as a smallish stump sprout of about 20 to 40 feet tall due to the chestnut blight. American chestnut was an important timber tree and wildlife tree, and additionally the nuts were an important food source for humans within its range. American chestnut's natural range was from Maine to Mississippi from the Piedmont Plateau in the Carolinas west to the Ohio Valley. In Kentucky, it was most common in the Appalachian sections and extended westward across the state on non calcareous soils and was mostly absent from the bluegrass. It was typically found in both dry and mesophytic forest on a variety of well-drained soils. Chestnut is a fast-growing tree that is thought to have grown best in full sunlight to light shade. While American chestnut was decimated by the chestnut blight, it is still found in the woods today, mostly as stump sprouts that eventually are impacted by the blight, causing large deforming cankers on the stem that eventually leads to death. The chestnut blight, which was caused by the fungus Cryphonectria parasitica, was accidentally imported from Asia in the early 1900s when Japanese chestnut trees were imported for cultivation. It was first found in the New York Zoological Gardens in 1904. By 1913, enough American chestnuts had been wiped out that the USDA began investigating. The Japanese and Chinese chestnuts showed some disease resistance, at least enough to keep it from becoming fatal. Unfortunately, the American chestnut had no resistance, and by 1940, more than 3.5 billion trees had been impacted or lost to the blight. The chestnut blight fungus causes cankers, dieback, and ultimately death of above-ground parts of American chestnut. Formation of cankers and death of branches or stems may occur in a single season. Today, there is tremendous research being done to help restore the American chestnut. The leaves are alternately arranged on the stem and simple in form. They are oblong to lanceolate and between 5 to 8 inches long. They are pinnately veined, which means like a feather, with sharp and coarsely serrated margins. And each serration has a bristle tip, as you can see in the photo. They are dark green above and pale below, and fall leaf color is yellow to gold. American chestnut leaves can be confused with American beech leaves, but beech leaves serrations do not usually have the bristle tip. American chestnut is monoecious, meaning a tree has both male and female flowers. The male flowers are very small, pale green to white, occurring along 6 to 8 inch long catkins. The female flowers are at the base of the catkins and close to the twig. The flowers bloom in late spring to early summer, and the flowers are wind pollinated. The fruit is a large, distinctive, round, spiny husk. The spines on the husk are very sharp. It is usually 2 to 2 and a half inches in diameter, and it contains 2 to 3 shiny chestnut brown edible nuts. The nuts are one and a half to one inch in diameter, round and usually flattened on one or two sides. They ripen in early fall, and the fruit was dispersed by gravity and wildlife. The bark is chestnut brown and smooth on young stems, and as the tree grows and ages, the bark develops shallow fissures with flat ridges, eventually developing into distinctive large interlacing ridges and furrows. The wood is strong, lightweight, and decay resistant. The heartwood is light to medium brown, and the sapwood is pale with white to a light brown. This species is ring porous with large early wood pores. Those are the vessels produced in spring and early summer, 
with numerous latewood pores. Those are the vessels produced later in the growing season, which are, tend to be much smaller. Wormy chestnut is wood that has been damaged by insects, leaving holes and other discoloration in the wood. Chestnut is rated as very durable. Chestnut wood is not common due to the blight and is relatively valuable. Today, wormy chestnut in particular is salvaged from old barns and other structures. American chestnut was a valuable wildlife tree. The fruit was a reliable and widely available food staple for deer, bear, turkey, and other small mammals such as the white-footed mouse, which were important food source for other predatory species such as fox, owl, hawks, and snakes. The foliage was larval host for more than 125 different Lepidopteran species. American chestnut was a valuable tree for its ecosystem services as well as its use by humans. Chestnut seed crops were extremely important for feeding humans and livestock. It was a significant tr contributor to rural agriculture economies. Hogs and cattle were released into the woods prior to market to feed and fatten up on the nuts in the fall. The nuts were also gathered for the holiday season where they were transported to major cities to be roasted or sold fresh. The wood was prized because it is light, strong, and decay resistant. The wood was used for furniture, decorative trim, and construction. During colonial times, chestnut was the preferred wood for log cabin foundations, fence posts, flooring, and caskets. It was also later used for railroad ties and telephone poles, many of which are still in use today. And the bark was used for tanning leather. According to the National Registry of Champion Trees, the largest American chestnut as of 2021 was in Thurston, Washington. It is 237 inches in circumference, 93 feet tall, with a 94 foot crown spread. Kentucky's Champion American chestnut is in Adair County, and it's 137 inches in circumference, 47 feet tall, with a 62 foot crown spread. If you'd like to know more about Champion Trees, check out American Forest Champion Trees or check out the Kentucky Division of Forestry Champion Trees. Now for a few fun facts about American Chestnut. American Chestnut was an integral part of life from cradles to nourishing food sources to coffins. Native Americans used various parts of the tree medicinally for more than 30 different documented ailments, including whooping cough, heart trouble, and rheumatism. Late 19th century newspapers featured articles about railroad cars overflowing with chestnuts as they entered major cities to be sold fresh or roasted. In 2015, the Maine Forest Service measured what they believed to be the tallest American chestnut today in Lovell, Maine. It was 115 feet tall. The scientific name for American chestnut is castanea, which is from the Greek castanea, which means chestnut, and dentata is from Latin, which means toothed, referring to large teeth or serrations on the leaf margins. Thanks for joining me to learn about the American chestnut. I hope you get the opportunity to get out into your woodland, a natural area, or park and look for the remnants of this once outstanding forest giant. And to learn more about the American chestnut, check out the American Chestnut Foundation.